Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. Uh, the Academy met in session this morning to decide on this year's Nobel Prize in Physics, and we are now ready to announce it. And it took a little while for us to get in touch with uh, Nobel laureates, so therefore we are a few minutes late. I apologize for that. I'm Jaron Hansen, I'm the Secretary General of the Academy, and with me today is on my right Professor David Haviland, who is the Chairman of the Nobel Committee for Physics, and on my left Professor Ulf Danielsson, who is, among many other things, also a member of the Nobel Committee. Before we announce the prize, I would like to thank all of you who are here in the session room today. And I regret that we have to operate under restrictions imposed by the corona pandemic, and I really appreciate that you are complying with these restrictions, so thank you. I must also apologize to all the journalists who cannot be here in the session room this year. Normally we are close to 90 people in this room, now we must be fewer than 30 persons altogether. And therefore, many representatives of the media will have to follow the press conference over the video link. Uh, we're really sorry that we could not admit you, and we hope for your understanding, and we're offering interviews with Nobel Committee members and other experts uh, immediately after the press conference. Thank you for your understanding. Now, over to the Nobel Prize in Physics. This year's prize is about the darkest secrets of the universe. Årets Nobelpris handlar om universums mörkaste hemligheter. Kungliga vetenskapsakademin har beslutat att utdela 2020 års Nobelpris i fysik med ena hälften till Roger Penrose för upptäckten att bildandet av svarta hål är en robust förutsägelse av den allmänna relativitetsteorin. Och med andra hälften gemensamt till Reinhard Genzel och Andrea Ghez för upptäckten av ett supermassivt kompakt objekt i Vintergatans centrum. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has today decided to award the 2020 Nobel Prize in Physics with one half to Roger Penrose for the discovery that black hole formation is a robust prediction of the general theory of relativity. And the other half, jointly to Andrea Ghez and Reinhard Genzel for the discovery of the supermassive compact object at the center of our galaxy. Die Königliche Schwedische Akademie der Wissenschaften hat heute beschlossen, den Nobelpreis für Physik des Jahres 2020 mit einer Hälfte an Roger Penrose für die Entdeckung, dass die Bildung von schwarzen Löchern eine robuste Vorhersage der allgemeinen Relativitätstheorie ist, und die andere Hälfte gemeinsam an Reinhard Genzel und Andrea Ghez für die Entdeckung eines supermassereichen, kompakten Objekts im Zentrum der Milchstraße zu verleihen. Die Akademie Royale des Sciences de Suède hat decidé ce jour d'attribuer le Prix Nobel de Physique 2020 avec une moitié à Roger Penrose pour la découverte que la formation de trous noirs est une prédiction robuste de la théorie de la Relativité Générale. Et l'autre moitié, conjointement à Reinhard Genzel et Andrea Ghez, pour la découverte d'un objet compact supermassif au centre de notre galaxie. Kurelievska et Academia Nauk Schwetsi, Rechila Sivodnia Prisudic, Nobelevski Premi Pofisiki, Adno Paraladino, Roger Penrose, Zad Kriti et Avo, Sto Obrazovanie Tchornich Dir. Javiajecja na dožnim predskazanjem občej teoriji odnositelnosti. Staruju Paladinu ravna Reinhard Genzel i Andrea Ghez za odkritje supermasivnovo kompaktnovo objekta v centri naše galaktiki. And you have the pictures of the new Nobel laureates on the screen behind me. Roger Penrose was born in Colwich in England and got his PhD at Cambridge University. He's now Emeritus Professor in Mathematics at the University of Oxford. 
Reinhard Genzel was born in Bad Homburg for der Höhe in Germany. He got his PhD at the Universität Bonn and he's currently director at the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics in Garching in Bayern in Germany. And he's also a professor at the University of California at Berkeley in the United States. Andrea Ghez finally uh, was born in New York City. She got her PhD at uh, Caltech in Pasadena in California and is currently professor at the University of California, Los Angeles in the United States. Now, we are not requesting that the Nobel laureates come to Stockholm in December this year to pick up their prizes. Because of the pandemic, we plan for digital Nobel lectures and a digital prize ceremony with laureates participating over video links. We are still working on these events, uh, together with the Nobel Foundation and, of course, from now on with the laureates themselves. And we'll come back with uh, more information as soon as it becomes available. But already at this stage, I can assure you that the Nobel laureates will receive their awards before the end of the year and that they will be invited to Stockholm next time we can celebrate the Nobel Prize in the traditional way here in Stockholm in December. And with that, I'd like to ask uh, David Hanlon, Chairman of the Nobel Committee for Physics, to make some remarks. David, please. Thank you, Jaron. On behalf of the Nobel Committee for Physics, I would like to congratulate the laureates in receiving the 2020 Nobel Prize. This year's prize celebrates one of the, most, the discovery of one of the most exotic objects in our universe, the black hole. For many years, physicists questioned the very idea of a black hole, treating it as a peculiarity in our, the in our theory of gravity. Roger Penrose showed that black holes might really exist, forming in a stable and robust process consistent with the theory of general relativity. Reinhard Genzel and Andrea Goetz led research teams to make precise observations over many years which pointed to the existence of a supermassive black hole in the center of our very own galaxy. My, colleagues in the Nobel Committee, my colleague in the Nobel Committee for Physics, Professor Ulf Danielson, will tell us more about the contributions of this year's laureates to the discovery of black holes. Thank you, David. And now, Ulf, the floor is yours. As early as the end of the 18th century, the English astronomer John Mitchell and the French scientist Pierre Simon Laplace speculated that there might exist objects with a gravity so strong that not even light can escape. We now call such objects black holes. To create them, you would need to compress the sun into a region only a few kilometers across or to squeeze the Earth down to the size of a pea. But it was only in 1915 when Einstein formulated his general theory of relativity that we had a mathematical framework powerful enough to describe such objects. Physicists, Einstein himself included, were confused for decades. The mathematics was too complicated. Could something like that actually occur in a real universe? And then, in 1965, inspired by the discovery of new violent phenomena in the universe, in need of an explanation, Roger Penrose published a remarkable paper. He introduced new mathematical tools and proved with mathematical rigor that the formation of black holes is an inevitable consequence of general relativity. In a universe governed by general relativity, the formation of black holes is a natural and expected process. Let us study now a black hole a little bit more closely. In general relativity, there's an intimate relation between gravity and time. Down at my feet, time runs a trillionth of a second slower per hour than it does up in my head. 
And if you have a black hole, time even seems to stand still at the horizon of the black hole. Now, I can point towards the black hole and say, there it is. There is the center of the black hole. My finger is stretched along a direction of space. But if I then bring my finger a little bit closer and let the tip of my finger go through the horizon and enter into the interior of the black hole, I will make a startling and somewhat worrying discovery. The direction inwards is now time. And the tip of my finger will be in my far future. And it will be as difficult to pull my finger back out again as it would be to travel backwards in time. Furthermore, my finger will be torn apart and the tip of my finger will be carried by time all the way into the center of the black hole where time itself ends and the known laws of physics cease to apply. But if such objects now actually exist in the real universe, then how could you find them? Well, actually, already in 1783, John Mitchell had an idea. What if, what if there are other luminous objects, such as stars, moving around the black hole, then one could fear the existence of the black hole by following the motions of the stars. But it would take more than 200 years before this dream would come true. And it was Reinhard Gensel, Andrea Gies, and their teams who did it. They turned their telescopes towards the center of our galaxy, 26,000 light years away, where there were suspicions that something strange was going on. And you have to look in the infrared to reveal its secrets. What they found was incredible. They could see several stars moving around something that they couldn't see. And it was one star in particular that caught their attention. It took the star around 16 years to complete its orbit. At closest approach, it was no more than 17 light hours away from the invisible object. Calculations show that four million solar masses is hiding there. There is no other explanation than a supermassive black hole. This year's laureates have uncovered secrets in the darkest corner of our universe. But this is not just an old adventure coming to its triumphant conclusion. It's a new one beginning. As we probe ever closer to the horizons of the black holes, nature might have new surprises in store. Thank you very much, Ulf, for that excellent uh, introduction. And now it's time for questions. Uh, when you ask questions, if you could please uh, push the button on the microphone stand so that it, it comes, uh, the, your, your voice is picked up. Uh, actually, we hope to have one of our new Nobel laureates with us on a phone line. Dr. Andrea Gez, are you there? Yes. 
Hello, this is uh, Jaran Hansen again. I'm the guy who called you uh, about an hour ago to give you the good news. And we are now in the middle of our press conference, uh, and I want.